All right, guys, we're tattooing up to the line while staying inside the line. A very simple concept when coloring in a coloring book, but in tattooing, not always that easy. As you can see here, see here I'm coming at this the way I used to come at a fill. Line on both sides. I'm going to try to just run down the middle and fill it or try to get my needles just as close to the edge as I can, and that should do the trick. Especially when you're from a distance, it looks great. And you do the wipe, and this is what you're left with. I see this a lot in the work that's sent in. You get a lot of these gaps going up to lines, so I figured I would share this. Again, you see it here. We got a little closer. Not quite the greatest. Now I want to show you what I do now, and eventually I'm going to show you a very easy way that anybody can do this successfully. So I take the needles and I drop them right in on the line. As you can see here, I find that line that's already been tattooed. I make sure those needles are right there. Then I slowly move out. I mean, that guarantees that my ink is going to be right on top of that line and then outward wherever I'm going. Here the mag is just a little bit too big. And certainly I could use a smaller mag, but I just want to show you. Sometimes a mag right up on the line doesn't work. It's going to go outside the lines. So, but with time you get more comfortable with your needles and whatnot you just throw that thing on the side like you see here and you work around it now this is good when you have enough comfort with mags and whatnot but sometimes even if you know how to do this even if it is comfortable in small pieces it's just a pain in the butt to constantly keep manipulating that mag And I thought I'd use this piece to help explain what I'm saying here. This piece is really small. So I busted out a round shader. This is either a seven or a nine round shader. And I'm just going around the outside. It has a lot of points to it that I don't want to fight my mag in. I just want to drop in there and get it done. So again, I'm using a round shader for this. Again, I treat these like paintbrushes. Am I going to edge the entire... I'm painting a wall. No, I'm not going to sit there with a roller and go through the whole thing all the time. Sometimes it's nice to take your edger and go and edge things and then come back with the roller and roll the middle. As you can see right here, it's exactly what we're doing. And again, that round shader makes it a bit easier. You have more control over it. It's a little bit smaller. So again, it makes it easier to get in points to just get in those areas that you don't want to fight your mag. Again, this technique's probably not the best all the time, but I do use it from time to time in situations like this. So if you are having trouble in work and getting that uh, color packed right up to the line, you don't want to do too much because you don't want to go outside the lines, but you want that saturation inside. This is a technique that I think a lot of people know, a lot of people use, but if you don't know, you don't know. And it's a technique that I use when I need it. Again, usually in smaller pieces like this, usually when you want to try to get the tips of something, the points of something without having to manipulate that mag all the time. And again, we're just going through and packing in the center. And it's a very quick and efficient way to get something done. And here you guys can see the actual size this is. It's not terribly large. And that's why this works. If you guys enjoyed the video, give it a like, subscribe, ring the bell. And until next time, peace.